Do your official introduction. All right. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> That's your introduction. That's it. <laughs> this is it. All right. Welcome to the Music Room. My name is Jeff. If this is your first time here, click the subscribe button, hit the bell, give it a like, give it a thumbs down. We got Jeremiah Big Sexy. We call him Big Sexy. That's what I call him. I call him Big Sexy. He's uh, he's on our esteemed celebrity panel today. And of course, to my left over here, if you look to your screen to the left, we've got Mr. Trey. Your other left. Bledsoe probably did the best drum cover of Hooligan's Holiday on YouTube. <laughs> like nobody's done a better freaking drum. And by best, you mean yeah? And by best, the only uh, the only drum. Uh, yeah, it is good though. It is good. Oh, I yeah. love the drums in that tune, man. Yeah, it is. Uh, Tommy put something together in that that's just I, I don't know why it. it it's that's a badass drum track that's their best album i not i'm sorry it's not their best album right but but it's it's one of their best albums underrated most underrated yeah see what i did there wink wink yeah (laughs) is it motley crew no it's not my crew see that's where i've been coming from it's it's it's, it's, but it's like van halen wasn't van halen was sammy hagar that was it was a totally different band so when I listen to that album, that's uh, that's always where I'm coming from. It's like this really it's it's I don't think of it in terms of Motley Crue. It's just a badass album. Oh, it's a it's a freaking really good album. It's a really oh, the drum sound. Oh yeah. my god. Was that Bob Rock? Yeah. Was it Bob Rock? Yeah. All right. So today we're discussing well, it's more of an argument of <laughs> So just, we should we should talk about everybody's qualifications here to make us just you know why do we get to decide who the five most underrated drummers are in the world in the whole world and, and so Pluto. with me it's because um, I'm overrated. <laughs> I would, I would, I would solidly it, say it, you're it, middle rated. It, it, Jeremiah, I tried giving him a drum lessons once. He actually said I was the worst drum teacher. <laughs> he said, uh, like, I didn't even, like, teach him anything. I just sat down and showed off, which is what is, I don't know. That's kind of what a good drum teacher does. I would. It, it was show, impressive. Def, it was defined showing off. I've got to know here. Define. It was that. highly impressive. I was just pulling out licks, dude. It was a lot of unnecessary flash and zoom. Uh, all right. So the topic for today is the five most underrated drummers and i'm gonna go i would say rock i mean th- we could get into this yeah all, you know we could argue this fact all all day um but i'm gonna say rock and, and all five of mine actually are members of the rock and roll hall of fame oh shit okay and, really? yeah every single one of them if i could remember them I think I got them. All right. Yeah, they all they're all members of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame at some form or another. They've all played on, you know, multi huge platinum albums. They've all played with massive acts, but I don't think any of them get the recognition they deserve. So like you said before, we got to lay down the criteria. The criteria is just uh, I think they have to be underrated in their sphere of influence in the in the in the general drumming world. Everybody talks about Vinny Caliuta, how he's but you know how great Vinny was. And he was he was great. But there's other drummers out there as well that are great um, that don't get the recognition they deserve. I guess I'll start with my number five, Ansley Dunbar. 
now beast. beast of a drummer this is what you need to know about ansley dunbar he played with frank zappa i mean there's 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 nothing really i mean you could end it right there he played with frank zappa but yeah. he, he played with zappa and here's yeah. another thing a lot of people don't know about him is when uh jimmy page was forming a little band called the new Yardbirds that would eventually go on to become zeppelin he asked dunbar to play drums for that group so we could conceivably be talking about ansley dunbar versus john bottom these days but i don't know like the same time is is if you compare him to bottom they're two different types of players you know yeah, they, they are they are you know yeah dunbar was more schooled where bottom was more bottom you know but yeah that's when you go to bottom you just gotta kind of leave it at that bottom which is this mix of precision but just massive feel dude yeah. he was all group Hunter. he was he, Hunter. i could talk about him all day long i mean we know i have a problem with with you know like i i'm completely unoriginal yeah. in all my licks they're all just john bottom i mean i'm fat yeah i drank too much i mean i pretty much um <laughs> yeah, you don't want to have his love child we know right i am pretty much him without the talent or the money or the cool right. green mamba jet dragster car so right. that's my number five so which one i don't care just somebody go <laughs> All right. Well, my number five is John Fred Young. Anyone? Ooh. Anyone? Ooh. You I'm not anyone? aware of John okay. Fred Young. Okay. Yeah, that's that wasn't on my radar. All right, tell it. Go ahead, spill it. I'm Extremely. John Fred Young, Blackstone Cherry. Yeah, oh. badass drummer. He's about like ninety miles west. He's of a powerhouse. It. Yeah, and his uncle oh. is a friggin' badass. He's somebody that I don't, I mean, I don't know, Jeff, I'm sure Jeff, you're familiar with Blackstone Cherry. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're that whole new rock thing though. And I'm not really that much into, um, but yeah, I, I'm a very familiar with him. Um, he's a straightforward guy. He's not an over the top guy. He's not a, a, you know, he's not a complex fill type guy. He's just a solid, solid. Uh, I guess I would say for, you know, lack of a better word, he's very bottom esque. He, he plays with a lot of, Thunder, you know, thunder, I guess. I'm going to agree on that. He's, he, he plays. I with, think of thunder. So, yeah. And he, he plays with a tremendous amount of energy. Yeah. He is, he is a beast of a drummer. And again, this I is the point to... where Jeff would insert a John Fred Young five second video clip right now. I, yeah. I'm trying to, to, I'm trying to, but I don't want to lose my monetization. Do it post, <laughs> right? Right? I'm doing, I'll do it in post. I'm trying to. Yeah. I'm actually yeah, post a picture up of them. Um, uh, but I'm not that apparently I'm not that spry. He is the son of the drummer from Kentucky Headhunters. Kentucky. Oh, Headhunters. Really? So he's Fred Young. It's, yeah, but it's his That's, uncle. Okay. It's his uncle. uncle. Fred is uncle. his uncle. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, All right. Fred actually needs to be on somebody's list. Fred's a badass drummer, and oh, hell yeah, dude plays the coolest oh, wow. kit, the oh, coolest God. kit. Yes, dude, the, he's got those big. What are they like? Thirty-two inch kicks? Yeah, something like that. But it, it's the give or take look, and oh, it's, yeah, it's the shit. And they're DWs. No, they are not DWs. But they were DWs. <laughs> are you sure? No, they're old. Uh, he, he uses old Ludwig marching drums. Oh, are you talking about the Kentucky Headhunter guy? Or? I'm talking about the Kentucky yeah. Headhunter guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, Fred Young. Okay, I see what, yeah. Now Fred see Young. Man. Yeah. Yeah. See me here, see here. Uh, let's see if I can get a picture up. Here we go. You see that thing? Okay. So, okay, I see oh. that. Yeah, so first of all, the dude has the best chops. I was oh, just yeah. going to say, holy Look cow. things, man. And he's got A cups, just like. You turned off your mic again there, uh, Big Sexy. He's got a cups. <laughs> we for, for those don't kick, judge. Don't judge. Those kick drums are they're old. I think he said they're old like leadies. Either leading Ludwigs or old leadies. And they were from like a community marching band. They're like they're like 28 or 20, 28 or 30 inch kick drums. 
And then uh, it's an old, that's a, the, uh, that right there. I don't know if, let me see right here. This guy, I could do this. Check this out, man. Got all these cool to things we can do. So that right there, that's an old cool. snare drum that he just turned into a, turned into a rack Tom. Yeah, that's cool, cool, man. It's cool stuff. Wait, why is it only $500? What's $500? What? That price on that image you just showed was 500 bucks. Was it? What? what, what I mean? Oh, it's a print. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So to oh, use the it's, image, it's, it's to purchase a license to use the image. <laughs> Holy shit, for five hundred dollars? Oh shit! <laughs> what? I don't know, man. I just pulled That's up. It's a steal. It is. It's cheap. <laughs> Look at that. All right, Trey. Who's your number five? <laughs> I don't know. I'm making this shit up as I go. Let me see if I come up with something. I want to go back to Fred Young though, real quick. He has been doing this as well before I even started playing drums. And he's he's good people in in the state. Yeah. Uh, and then on top of it, I just I can't compliment him as a player enough. He is whew. he's a beast. What do you think about Sean Kenny is underrated? I think Sean Kenny's extremely underrated. Um, I just don't know if it, I feel like he needs to be higher on the list, man. Dude, dude, I I love Sean Kenny's plan. Um, don't shoot me, but that's Alice James. James? Sorry, James. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so. It, if you look at uh, just the part alone for uh, how do I sound, by the way, I'm kind of way off the mic. Oh, um, good. Good me. All right. Um, it's okay. Ha that, that drum part. Yeah. That's, I like, I can't do it's like, I still like, what is that song? Name of the song? All, all excuses or not all excuses. Yeah. yeah. No excuses. No excuses. No excuses. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a, it's a tricky, it's a tricky, tricky, hard song. Really tricky. Yeah. I would say he he's really cool in that he's an accent drummer. Yeah, exactly. Am I using yeah. or am I using the wrong words? He he's no, that's exactly that, the right word. He's a guy that doesn't play just straight time. He's a really good accent drummer. He, he plays really... plays off the melody, which yes. is it's yes. very. He doesn't plow through like all the other Seattle guys. You look at guys like Dave Grohl. Uh, yeah. Well, not so much. Uh, Matt Cameron, but uh, Dave Eberzizi, he he's a dude that plowed through um, all those Seattle guys. Uh, Bar was it Barrett Martin from Screaming Trees? He's another dude that plowed through. Sean doesn't right. plow through. And he honestly was in the heaviest band. I mean, to me, they were. They were the heaviest band out of the Seattle scene. And I never really considered Alice in Chains to be a heavy. No, I never considered them to be a grunge band. Like, no, uh -oh. I didn't. I didn't really either. I mean, Facelift was the first album out of that whole scene. Facelift was the first one. No, actually, Soundgarden would have been first. To be considered grunge? Yeah. Um, it, w it was It was Bad Motor Finger. So, because Louder Than Love came out in, in like, 88. I'm on their Wikipedia page, so take this with a grain of salt. Right. Um, with a giant uh, grain of salt. Yeah, but it, I assume this is probably right. So, so Louder Than Love came out in 88. And then Bad Motor Finger came out in 91. So that would be pre, uh, maybe about the same time as, as Face. I think Facelift came out in 91 too. So yeah, I was saying, we're talking 90, 91? Yeah. Facelift God. came out. Hold on a second here. Don't you have several assistants right now on the other side I, of the camera I, doing I, all this for uh, you? Night, Facelift came out in 1990. Oh man, 1990? Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy wow. to think about. Yeah, because I saw Alice in Chains at the World Series, or not the World Series of Rock, the Clash of the Titans tour at Alpine Valley. It would have been, yeah, wow. probably would have been 1990. I, I like that was Slayer. Ni or 91. It was either 90 or 91. It was Slayer, Megadeth, um, Anthrax. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And oh, Alice in Chains. And Alice in Chains was the opener. They were the first band, and they got fucking booed. <laughs> Just all the Slayer, Slayer! You know, uh, Megadeth came on. Wow. Megadeth came on. And Alpine Valley is this big, for those that don't know, Alpine Valley is yeah. similar to, to Red Rocks. Um, Only better. Well, yeah, but with this big grass hill and... Like it's the it, largest outdoor amphitheater in the country, or so it's billed as. Yeah. And people were throwing 
sod down from the people always <laughs> throw top. You're, you've been there for this yeah it doesn't matter if they're if they love the band or they hate the band they always throw sod. they were throwing sod down of course somebody at the top of the hill would grab a chunk of grass and throw it down somebody yeah. else grab that same yeah. chunk of grass throw it down i may or may not have thrown sod myself i'm not i sad. may or may not have thrown sod at myself at that show and one hit me in the back of the head and i think i threw it down and eventually some of the sod Made its way, made its way to Dave Mustaine, who right was, in, if you know Dave Mustaine was probably not pleased. And this was this was drinking and angry Dave Mustaine. This is not the new. This is not the new and improved gentle Dave Mustaine we have no, now. And no. he got it with a big. I, I remember it clear as day. They're right in the middle of fucking holy wars and this big chunk of grass dirt comes up and just hits him in the side of the head <laughs> he stops mid song turns around goes i hope you guys had a good time throwing grass fuck you and walked off <laughs> and of course everybody booed and eventually they came on and finished their set and then uh anthrax Which is played. what i would do no and then slayer played and i thought i was gonna die like I never, I've never been in a concert in my life where I was scared. I was scared when Slayer was playing. It was just, dude, it was fifty thousand fucking people. Yeah. Well, and you seen the uh, the Jim Brewer stand up thing on Slayer? Release Slayer, friends. <laughs> yeah. But it's true. It is true. Yeah. It's it true. Is. It's true. I mean, actually, the band that I've the, the band that I've seen most completely win over a full Alpine crowd was Pantera. When did you see I, Pantera? Really? They had they had the crowd fifty thousand strong just chanting Pantera for forty five minutes. Yeah, Pantera. They outdid, they outdid Ozzy. They outdid everybody. That honestly doesn't surprise me. That was that was awesome. I was very new to Pantera at that time. I didn't really, I wasn't fully up on my Pantera, but I learned. I, I you're gonna learn today, like they say, and I did. Yeah, dude. At at one point, they were a freaking machine. They were a fucking juggernaut, man. Yeah, it was fucking insanity as to how tight that band was. Well, you I mean you see that footage of them in Moscow with a million people, oh, and they were the first band. Shit. They were the first band that day, man. Going ape shit. A million people, a million crazy ass vodka fueled Russians. Yep. It's just going. Nuts. They were the first band that day. That was before. I think that was before. I, um, any band that went on after them. <laughs> I think it was before right. Vulgar Display even came out, I think. Yeah, I think it, it was. was. It was. Yeah. It was just Cowboys. Yeah. And, and yeah, it was just they, they freaking killed. That, that was that really was. That was a band on a fucking mission they they destroyed that I, yeah. I understand you know everybody goes to the live aid freddie mercury performance but for a lot of us that pantera performance right there yeah it's iconic you know what actually everybody talks about uh of course queen at live uh, we're all too we we're all kind of too young for that one you know i i, I was pretty young what i remember Remember the Freddie Mercury tribute concert? Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, I, do. I remember Extreme. Remember Extreme go. came out and kicked everybody's fucking ass that day. I'm what telling like a, a they did a minute medley of all Queen songs. Yeah, just everything. And it was so freaking good. Jamie, can you pull that up for me? <laughs> was that when they had Mike Mangini? Yeah, it was Mike Mangini. Oh, badass. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah, that's my. I've, I've always read. Not Mike, no, I'm sorry, not Mike McGee. Mike, uh, Paul Geary. Paul Geary. Oh, Paul Geary was. Oh, was Paul Geary's. Man. Yeah. Yeah. No, because Mike Mangini was after. I saw them with Mike Mangini before anybody knew who Mike Mangini really was. I remember. Mike he, Mangini's a trip. <laughs> I re- Actually, right there by accident, we just kind of, kind of <laughs> on another another underrated drummer. Paul Geary. Paul Geary. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Try to play that turnaround and get the funk out. Oh shit! It's 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 yeah. Do it right okay, now. So I'm going. I'm, I'm throwing him in my list. All right. Well. All right. Who's your number four? I, Mike Mangini. <laughs> Mike Mangini gets a lot of crap too. Even though he's definitely not underrated anymore. He never. No, was. Mike, Mike Mangini you know? is is. But a, he always they used to bag on him because they people used to say he's all speed. 
But that guy can that guy can play jazz drums. No, really the dude the dude improved. played with extreme. You, yeah, you can't be in that band and not lay down. No, you, no. you got to lay down. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Mike Mangini can groove, man. He yeah, really yeah, can. He can. Yeah. yeah, and Mangini and people of that caliber, they just I don't know. Yeah, I guess it becomes a target for some people, an easy yeah. target. The dude is a world class player. End of story. That's it. Absolutely. Whether he's your thing or not, that that, that that's always the story. Right. But you can't deny the fact that he can sit in so many settings. It's just stupid. Yeah. You know? I mean, you've seen, I mean, Grant, this is talking about how he just plays really fast, but I mean, have you you guys have seen his Flight of the Wounded Bumblebee on drums, right? Oh, yeah. Geez. Yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah I know I've only seen it 700 times. Yeah. All right. Number four. Am I going first on my number four? Yeah, you go first. You're the host. Bill fucking Ward. Bill Ward. Yeah. Yeah. So you, wow, you consider him underrated, huh? I consider Bill Ward extremely underrated. Okay. And I'll tell you why. Um, He's like in my wheelhouse as a, as a player. Um, Yeah. I, I, those are the dudes I freaking always tried to emulate. Bill Ward, John Bonham, Carmen of Peace, all those guys because they had swing in their plan. But we've talked about this, Trey. That dude has the most swing and his timing. It's brutal. It's brutal how he just would push and pull and fairies wear boots. His triplets are so incredibly clean. You know what I mean? It's, it's, but at the same time, it's it's him. It, but it's swing, and, it, and like him. yeah, and and another dude that reminds me is is the same way is is another guy that I fucking love on the modern is is Miley. Miley's another dude like that. Yeah, yeah where he's just got he's he plays the big drums and he swings and he's another one. His triplets are so fucking clean. I can't play triplets like that. My triplets suck. I mean, my, my triplets sound like I'm they don't. No, they're not good. They sound like I'm falling. Shut up. I'm trying, I'm trying to be humble here for once in my life. I'm trying to be a little That's humble. One and, and my triplets sound like I'm falling down the stairs. Like if you listen to boards, triplets, they're nice and clean. Mine are like, you know, with a guy with one leg longer than the other trying to climb up the stairs. But you sound like you're doing your triplets with Tourette's. <laughs> what was the drinking game we talked about this earlier what? It's, it's Wisconsin. yeah we talked about this if we say something if you work in oh. if i work in tt boy you gotta have a drink <laughs> there you go and it was you something else too you were looking what peter north this is all an excuse to drink. <laughs> right. You are not fucking fooling me. Let's play a drinking game. If somebody talks, drink. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> drink. <laughs> all right. If somebody mentions their number four most underrated drummer, drink. <laughs> all right. Number four for me is Tim Alexander. Drink. <laughs> Of course, Primus, right? Yes. No, I, I, do you really consider him underrated? Not I, only Primus, but um, one other. What was the other very well-known band he played yeah. in? Shit. Shit. Shit poop. Uh, I, Somebody I, Google it. Tim Alexander is a guy that I always got into. So, I, some of the best bass drum work that I, you know, just whenever you heard him play, your, your feet just got to tap it. You know? uh, he was actually okay. This perfect is Wikipedia. Circle? He perfect circle, perfect circle. That's it. Yes, really. By, by before Josh Freeze. Ah, oh, he was yeah, the first drummer for Perfect Circle. I did not. I was yeah. not aware of that actually. Yeah. Um. Do you, all right. Speaking of, now, now, if we get back to Perfect Circle, of course, there's the tool. Obviously, all right. The the guys from Tool. What was their first band? Green Jelly? Yeah. Do you know that, Trey? I, I have yes. no idea on that. That was fucking Green Jelly was basically Tool. It's da- Danny Carey. Yeah. And I think I think Adam, too, right? Adam McKay? I think so, right? Yeah, it wasn't Maynard. But wasn't it was- Maynard, but that's... They meant Maynard. Green Jelly. Green... Little pig, little pig, let yeah, me... Yeah. yeah. And, that's uh, fucking Tool, dude. Was, 
What was the other song? Put me on the wheel. Uh, Put me on the wheel. Whip me, teenage babe. <laughs> whip me, teenage babe. <laughs> Let me be your loving slave and whip me. <laughs> Put me on the wheel. Put me on the wheel. Whoa. Put me on the wheel. <laughs> Put me on the wheel. I want you to put me on the wheel. I had that. I had that on cassette, and it wasn't green jelly. And I wish I could find it. It was green jello, because well, because they changed they, it. They, like Kraft made them change their name. Got sued. Like setting yeah. his, threatening to sue them. Yeah. Yeah. Next person says green jello. Take a drink. <laughs> Purple jello. Uh. <laughs> Well, Jeff will just take a drink anyway. That's what I was going to say. I mean, yeah, I really have been good. I haven't been drinking that much. I've really. Till today. Yeah. Till I've really chilled out a little bit. It was, it was, it was, it's yeah, it was. It's yeah. been a few weeks since I got like weird shit from you. you well, yeah. <laughs> I wow. mean, you, you, you get those, like you send these drunk having toast. <laughs> fell down and then everything is misspelled <laughs> and then there'll be like this video clip of you doing this <laughs> you should have you seen, you I, seen I, me I my ro- sleep when you're doing this so i wake my, up the next morning it's like, my road band days when i was on the road i was it'd be two or three o'clock in the morning i drunk out my mom once man <laughs> we we were playing in, we were playing in cincinnati I don't know. Like after the after the gig was over, we ended up at some fucking bar. It was right across the street from the stadium. It was the jungle. It was right across the street, but it was just this nastiest, dirtiest bar. And it was like five o'clock in the morning, and we're all just I like I got. We ended up there with like somebody from the staff. They knew somebody, and you couldn't actually give money for your drinks. You had to put your money in a tip jar. Ah. And, and we're we're sitting there drinking, and I dialed my mom. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my, my phone. So I, you know how I do that. I dialed my mom, and, and <laughs> like the next morning, I wake up. There's a voicemail from my mom. My mom was like, "You called. Are everything all right? You called at like five o'clock in the morning, and it sounds like you're at some kind of party." <laughs> I remember getting some of those from you. <laughs> There was a stretch for about a month or two where I would get maybe one a week. Yeah. You remember? Yeah. I, oh, I don't I, no, know. I don't remember. Those were, man, we, we, I don't remember we what you to, said, but I remember getting them. We played, we played a bar once and, and we get done at the end of the night and we're packing up and the GM, the general manager of the bar comes out and he's got a receipt tape like trailing behind him and it, it's like like fluttering in the breeze and he's like he slams it down and he goes you guys drank 36 jaeger bombs tonight <laughs> wait combined 36 you had 30 combined bombs. combined Each. Eat the three of us drink 36 Jaeger rounds plus beer <laughs> plus wh- whatever. And I'm no mathematician, but <laughs> and and uh, 12 Jaeger bombs. Each. <laughs> but the thing is, I don't think we did. I think like people were putting it on our tab, oh. like going up, put it on the band tab or whatever. But um, here's the thing it's like we used time, to, you were only 170 pounds, right? <laughs> we, we first started doing this. When we first started doing this, we had an unlimited bar tab. Like they, they just bands, they wanted the bands to like throw a party. So we threw a party. Well, then they reduced our bar tab to $500 and we complained. (laughs) They realized you were from Wisconsin. What, like, what the hell are we supposed to do with a $500 bar tab? (laughs) This is true. You've got to lead off with saying we are from Wisconsin. Yeah. Yeah, hundred dollars. Yeah, five hundred dollars. Let's, let's talk. Let's let's talk about this. All right, who's your number four, Trey? Man, I'm making this shit up as I go. Hang on. Do you know who Will Hunt is? I'm gonna I'm gonna th- I'm gonna put him in. He has done so many stops, and he's in a group of guys that I look up to. So there's Will Hunt. There's Will Kishy. Hunt. Okay, yeah. played with uh, Black Label Society, Evanescence. So he's a dude. Oh, okay. Story member of Stain and Static X. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Really? A lot of stops here, man. Wow. So he's basically, yeah, he's a gun for hire. He's a studio guy. Very much so. 
Actually, never heard. I, I, I don't know how much studio. I, there's a ton of studio stuff, but on the live side, he was every. He did a stop with Vince Neil for a while. And he's a blast to watch. He's a just another hard. Will Hunt drummer. Yep, Will Hunt. Everybody drink every time you say Will Hunt. Drink. Will Hunt. Will Hunt. I don't. I'm out of beer. Damn it. How you be out of beer? I know. Said no Wisconsinite ever. <laughs> Shit. He, you're from Northern Wisconsin, dude. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're from the real Wisconsin. I'm, I'm like grew up in the poser Wisconsin. You know, we just, yeah. you know, you're pretty pathetic. I am. Yes. <laughs> I wear a coat when it's fucking 20 degrees out, like a fucking, well, like some right. fucking pussy. All right. Number three. Number trace. Uh, twat. Twat. <laughs> twat. Twat. Trey. Trey. Um, Alex Bocephus Van Halen. Ooh. What a, oh, okay. All right. So when your when your brother is arguably the best guitar player in the world, yep. you're gonna get overlooked. And despite that though, Alex, I think, is probably uh, one of the most overlooked drummers the if, yeah. you, if you listen to the way he worked he was another like you talk about accent drummers right mm-hmm. he was another yeah. act where he would pull in these weird accents in like try right, to play panama t- try to play panama that intro and it's not hard but yeah. there's no rhyme or reason the way it goes with the guitar nothing drop dead legs the cowbell you know where he places the cowbell once again what is he thinking you know and it it, everybody talks about rightly so like um hot for teacher hot for teacher right one of the most recognizable but hot for teacher really isn't that hard you know if you think about it it's chops it is but anybody who has chops on my level can play hot for teacher, you know, D- agree or disagree. I'll well, get there. I'll get there. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a really, really tough one to emulate. It is. But did, did. Do it. Well, what is it though? It's just what I'm, I'm not talking about the intro. I'm not necessarily talking about the intro. I'm talking about the meat, the meat of the song. Okay. Is it just the, it, the it's just a flam on the bass drum, right? No, well, it's just it's a shuffle beat. It's a shuffle. It's a shuffle okay. beat. So that's actually not that hard. But the fills he does in there, like I, I I'm emulating when I play the intro the, with the hurdas. Yeah, I'm 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 emulating what he does when I play it. And then you throw the you throw the shuffle with the bass drum underneath. It's yeah. to me, it's I've taught that to kids at school. They can at least fake it you know what i mean yeah and faking it is but i i keep going back to when you really put that track <laughs> under a microscope the way he's just throwing everything off the ride bouncing it and everything is so fucking tight are right, you I killing know. my whole point here <laughs> my point was- <laughs> i know, I know. Frank, <laughs> if, you want, if you want to go to the actual the beat itself no i agree with you because like you can get there, but then yeah. you get to what Alex did. But and then his fills, his fills in the in the, the lead, the fills are unbelievable. And are. The, the and like I've seen people bang on Alex too. Like they'll play like that solo because they fucking idiots, dude. Like the drum solo from from uh, um, Live Without a Net. They, I've seen dudes on Facebook. This is part of the reason why I'm not on Facebook anymore is because of this mass stupidity of how much that drum solo sucked and. Who I don't give a shit about his freaking drum solos. I think his his drum parts were were freaking genius. Going all the listen to uh, uh get up from fifty one fifty. Yeah, dude, it's freaking monster playing, monster yeah. playing. That is, his, his entire catalog is yeah. just I, so good, and I think he gets overlooked because a lot because of who his brother was. I really yeah, truly right. believe that. Yeah. He, he was in the band with arguably the greatest guitar, the most inv- right. inventive guitar player ever to live. You know, like if you're, if you're Beethoven's brother and you play the congas, I mean, nobody's heard of you, right? Nobody's heard of you. Hey, that was Even though you're great. badass at the congas. 
But your, you know, your brother's he, look with his, his, his younger brother, Tito. Tito <laughs> Beethoven. <laughs> You're Francis Beethoven. <laughs> Beethoven. You play the Tito Congos Beethoven. like nobody's business, but nobody gives a shit. <laughs> no. <laughs> what are you going to do? What are you going to do? <laughs> or, you know, to, to, to use more reference for you younger people, Lady Gaga's older brother. Nobody knows that guy either, but he plays a mean triangle, right? Man, was that, would it be Manny Gaga? <laughs> boy, boy Gaga? Boy Gaga? Gaga boy? I say, I say something stupid like Jim. Jim Gaga. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, you know it's like a Kevin, a Kevin Gaga, <laughs> Uncle <right>. Earl Gaga, <laughs> Uncle <Yeah>. Bob Gaga. <laughs> it's like Bob Gaga. Bob Gaga. Is that? That's Uncle Bob Gaga. Bob, just, it's my Bob. It's, you got you got Sylvester Stallone, you got Frank Stallone, right? right. You got Patrick Swayze, and you got <laughs> Patrick Swayze's brother. <laughs> His name already, <laughs> but uh, you get you get my point. Right? So, by the way, Patrick Swayze underrated. Oh, all time like the Mount Rushmore of underrated. Uh, underrated. I am a huge Swayze fan. She's like the win, uh, dude. Patrick Swayze was an all-state football player who was good at football, but he, it just so happened to be that his passion was dancing. So go figure, you know. I, he's. He was the dude was a stud athlete. He was an all state yeah. football player. <clears throat> I like Patrick Swayze. I mean, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. Roadhouse. Remember, remember, remember the lift and Dirty Dancing. I, I do. <laughs> Point break. You just muted Point yourself break. again, there, big sexy. <laughs> Point break. It's right. I'm going to point break. All right. I think I stalled enough for you to come up with a number three. Did well, I, get... I got my number three? Does anybody? Is anybody else got theirs? I just did mine. It was Alex Van Halen. Okay. Then then uh, you you did the, you did your first number three, right? There's oh, I only did one number three. I only have one number three. No, you were the first person. I was the three. first. Yeah, I was the first number three. Who is? Time out. I've got to get a drink. This has gone on. Okay. Can I do my... okay. So my number three, his brother's name has been brought up once by Jeff. It's Mr. Vinny Apice. Oh, Vinny. I like Vinny. Vinny. I'm a He's huge. A... Vinny is a fucking powerhouse. I'm a huge Vinny fan. Uh, uh, both of the both of the peace brothers. And I think uh He's is easily Apice? as, is it, as, as, as is it, I think is it Apice or Peace? I don't even know. I think it's a piece. I, I met him at Vanooks once, but I can't remember. I didn't ask him how he pronounced his last name, but it might be. But, but I, I could have swore, I remember, when they ever talk, whenever they talk about Carmine, I, I could have swore they, they pronounce it apathy. I think it's a piece. I think actually but Carmine. It might be. I think Carmine did a video on it. It, it if, could be. If you search, what it doesn't matter. We're not talking about Carmine. We're talking about Vinny. But I right. think Carmine was the first of the new style rock drummers that came to prominence in yeah. the 60s and 70s. It would go on to become Bonham. And, of course, Carmine and then Ian from um, Ian, Ian Pace from Deep Purple. Pace, I think Carmine yeah. was the first of them. And his brother Vinny, is, I think, dude, he's hugely overlooked, even more than Carmine. He's as easily as skilled as Carmine. Easily. He was, I mean, he played with Sabbath. He played with, um, what was his band? His band, I think his band at the time, I don't know if they were ever big, but World War Three. Karma uh, or Vinny? Vinny. Let's, you know what? If there was only some sort of device I could look on to see. Uh, right. Uh, Something with buttons and a screen, maybe? Yeah. So, born in 1957, 63 years old, Brooklyn, New York. Dio, Heaven and Hell, he played with Black Sabbath, of course. Dio, uh, yep. Um, he's in mm-hmm. Last in Line, uh, Hollywood Monsters, Resurrection King. Oh, Kill Devil Hill. I was, not, yeah. yeah, I was not aware of that. Is he doing anything nowadays? Huh? Is he doing anything right now? Currently? Yeah, he's playing with Heaven and Hell, isn't he? Or is wow. it, not Heaven and Hell. They're doing our Last in Line. Last in Sorry. Line. 
last in line. So it's it's uh, him and uh, the guy from Def Leppard. Vivian. Vivian Campbell, yeah. Who else is in that? Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah, if you – I'm sure he's got some videos on YouTube, but that guy, he was one of the – you know, he's – he was a guy that had the giant kit with drums all around him, and he could play him, man. He was. He's not dad. No. <laughs> I, don't, I hope not. He's not dad. He played on Rainbow in the Dark, which is, you know. And yeah. like, I, like I said, I was talking earlier before you were out getting a drink. I think he's yeah. overlooked even more than Carmine. Carmine could easily be on this list as well, in my opinion. Yeah. Which because, is which is sad. I mean, for Carmine years. could he could easily be on the Mount Rushmore of hard rock drummers. Carmine could. Oh, yeah. Oh God, yeah. I think he he's the I think out of the modern what I was telling him I think out of the modern hard rock drummers he's the first he's before Bonham he's before Ian yeah. you know he was first he was doing Vanilla Fudge in nineteen sixty six or whatever you know yeah yeah but I will I will say Vinny Vinny carved out his own style. So to have he's brothers, a monster, he really is. Yeah, he, he is, and he did not go the same route at all. No, he's a he's a very different drummer. Actually, I don't know if he still is, but he was always a single bass pedal drummer. Who still is, as far as I know, who would he'd sound like he had a double pedal? I mean, he was. He really, you know, he had a really he had a fast foot, and he he was able to you know incorporate it really well. Just a great guy too. He's a chill dude. Yeah. And, and then not and in addition to the foot speed, he is an incredibly balanced drummer. He yeah. can rotate left to right, right to left, left, left lead. Yeah. Right lead. It yeah. doesn't matter. He's and he's also a school drummer. Um yeah. tasteful drummer, hard hitting drummer. Uh I, yeah, I'm I'm a fan there. Just We're, great chops, great yeah. Uh, yeah, tasty chops, man. <laughs> That's my number three. Say chops, Drake. Sick chops. chops. Oh, I wish I had. Peter North. <laughs> <Good>. Drink. <laughs> yeah. Then spit it out. Ron Jeremy. Drink. I prefer hey, Peter what North. Happened? What happened to Big Ron? Yeah, what's going on with Big Ron? Uh, he there? got in big trouble. <laughs> I know he got in big trouble, but is, Wait, like, is he out? Big, or? Which I don't think so nowadays. Which that industry will do if you get a little too crazy. That industry will get you in trouble, especially if you got a wee wee. <laughs> <laughs> no, like if you haven't heard, the wee wees aren't popular right now. No, they're not. <laughs> they're the devil. Wee wees are the devil right now. They're the they're the source of all problems in the world in the universe. Trey, what's your number three? <laughs> Hey, what about what about uh, what do you think about Charlie Watts? Yeah, I'm definitely getting some Charlie Watts. Um, I like Charlie. Be honest, be honest. I I like Charlie. I think I you know I I I was never a huge Stones fan, man, and really wasn't. So I, either. I, Not I, to, you know I I. I recognize them as the second greatest band of all time. My problem with, with but, you know, my thing with Watts was that he always pulled his hat off the hi hat when he hit the snare drum. And it was something I noticed even before I started playing drums. And it's always kind of bugged me. Does it? <laughs> but, but yeah, I don't know why, uh, you know, and I'd have, I got to have students come in and that's their first inclination is their, you know, cause you don't want your, your limbs to move again. I'd, I'd yell at them, hit them over the knuckles, their little five-year-old hands. They'd start crying. They no, <laughs> no, you hit both hands at the same time. <laughs> so, but that at the same time is, is how he came up with the part for honky talk woman. It's all he's doing is playing like he does. Yeah. yeah and it's, you know, I, so I'm never a huge stones guy though. Never, never, ever, you know, it's probably the same vein as, you know, um, um, Oh my God. What's his name? Who was the guy that drummed for the Beatles? Now, Oh, that guy. Yeah, that guy. Yeah. Ringo, <laughs> Ringo star. Yeah. Probably in the same vein as him. Just a very solid backbeat kind of guy or or no no i just 
I think Ringo gets a lot of discussion, but then I don't. Well, because don't it's the Beatles, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. But, then, but nothing, you know, nothing super crazy fancy, but just no played for the music and just just seemed to have the perfect drum line yeah. for what was going on. I just you know? threw that out there. I'm going to go, though, with number three. I'm going to switch here. Uh, you switching? You switching Charlie Watts? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I just threw Charlie Watts out to see what you think. Two Charlie Watts under the bus. His, no, his, no, threw, you threw like, Charlie Watts heroin riddled no. ass under the bus. I'm not, doing <laughs> I'm not doing that. For whatever reason, I just thought of John Tempesta. Oh, from okay. Anthrax. Yeah. Or not from, uh, from Anthrax. From, uh, he's a, he, like when I was talking about Will. White Hunt, Zombie. Another guy. He's been got i think he's with helmet now helmet's still together wasn't he with corn for a while he could have been i don't know you know who was with corn oh, wait corn actually yeah made- harry bozio was with corn yeah for a while. bozio and uh, they there's go ahead go ahead you go first you're gonna say something so, it's your turn terry bozio would probably still be with corn but when bozio. they signed their when they signed their new deal he wanted publishing and and jonathan davis said we don't really? get all the drummers. Gary Bozio is a smart man. <laughs> yeah, he is. I can't blame him. That's, that's honestly, why he's John not with Corn anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's also that, 71 now. God, is he really 71 years old? That cute little the cute little drummer, Terry Bozio, 71 years old. Yep. He's another guy that played with Zappa, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah I think he was Zappa's actually, I think he was Zappa's favorite drummer. Yeah. Well, I mean it's I that's what I, I always got that vibe. Like, I, like, I think Bozio was his favorite drummer out of them all. You can, you can, no. I believe, you can still buy. You just muted yourself again. <laughs> you can still buy that one. It is one of his Siamese monsters. What's that? If you got thirty grand. Oh. All right, so I'm sorry. Who is your number three? You're changing your number three. We totally cut you off. Tempesta. Well, you said you said. Oh, Tempesta, Tempesta yeah. Right, you said <laughs> the corn connection. And now I'm wanting to switch it out because for a brief period with corn, Mike Borden was in there. Mike Borden played with corn too, dude. Very, forget very about Mike Borden. Oh Mike God. Borden's a huge underrated drummer. Oh, huge. how do you ever? I, dude, gonna, he I'm, totally yeah, slipped I'm, my I'm, mind. I feel so bad that I forgot three. about Mike Borden. Yeah, it's, I'm. I'm, oh. I'm going to go ahead and take him off the board. Put no, on number for- one. He's probably number one all time underrated. He totally slipped my mind because he is oh. a fucking monster. He's, he's a beast. Ass. He's a beast, and he never, no. ever, I know where you ever go. played a fucking drum solo. All Mike Borden yeah. ever did was play what was perfect for he the song. The band and the song, and he like never, that. ever, he never overplayed. Ever overplayed. Everything was no. perfect. No, and he, and again, he has the ability to play. Oops, I accidentally muted him. <laughs> you, you muted him this time? I accidentally muted him. <laughs> you, you've got to, in post, you've got to do this as the big sexy mute. Yeah, the big sexy mute. <laughs> oh, Borden, is, Borden is a guy that, honestly, he could have overplayed anything he wanted to, but mm-hmm. he never, ever did. I like Borden. I like Borden a lot, actually. He played with Ozzy. God, he was Ozzy's drummer for years, man. Probably longer than anybody. The what? The well, and that brings up another underrated guy in my mind. Anyway, Randy Castillo's time in Ozzy right is almost—I'm not going to say forgotten, not at all, but it's overlooked because Randy Randy was there a long ass time, man. He was there for shit all the late '80s, early '90s till Borden. Borden replaced him, right? Uh, let's see. Actually, Dean Castronovo, I think. <laughs> Am I saying that right? I, yeah, I don't know. Casanova, Casanova. He, he's another one. He did a short stint with Ozzy. So I want to think he came in after Castillo, and then Castillo came back. Oh. But I, I, you, you, I've told you this. You know I'm just a Castillo fan. I, I enjoy Yeah, it. I love Castillo. I like the what? Remember? What was that? Uh, there's a – there's a or was it EP or something? It came out in the late 80s with War Pigs on it. And oh, I remember man. Castile just tearing that shit up, man. Oh, they did. Well, they did the uh, the Russia thing, and there was a what, like a thirty minute thing that I saw that Ozzy's band did when they. What the hell was the name of that? Moscow Music Piece. 
but yeah, I mean, he just that that every clip they showed, he was just ripping everything a new asshole. <laughs> <laughs> We're on Randy Castillo now, but yeah, we're talking about Randy Castillo. We're, we're, we're past Mike Borden. You, we've moved past How Mike. Could Borden. you go past Borden? You oh can move. God. You know, there's a documentary on Netflix or either Netflix or or, or Amazon about him. Did you know that? Yeah, oh, Randy Castillo. Castillo. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like interesting exactly. dude, man. He played Quiet Riot too for a while, didn't he? Or no, Motley Crue. Motley Crue. Yeah. 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 He was with Motley Crue for a while because there was. They, they had that girl drummer for a little bit, and they had him. Actually, what did he, him, and then he got sick, and then the, what did he die of? Uh it was it was cancer, but I I can't remember exactly what. I remember a story that he was shaving and noticed a lump, and it was it was relatively aggressive. Oh, that's Andy Kaufman. <laughs> <laughs> You are so much louder than Daly on my end. <laughs> he just threw in a Kaufman riff. Mm -hmm. This is getting good now. All right. I guess I got to go to my number two. Oh, uh, here we go. Well, fucking stole my fucking thunder. Ringo. Okay. Ringo is my number two. I think Ringo is a... I'm what you're, you're 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 smiling over here sipping on your freaking your 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 uh, wild turkey and whatever. <laughs> I'm, thinking, I'm thinking of what we talked about. And I'll just go ahead and say it the, the other day when it's like when you have people that are out in the in the Ringo and the I know who you're going to bring up discussion comes up and they mention Ringo in such high regard they mention the other guy. It's like. Oh no 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 no! So that's what's making me laugh. Yeah, not Ringo. Not Ringo. I laugh at all. love Ringo. I think Ringo. I, I I do it this way. All right. So when when I was teaching, we 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 place the kids in bands by their ability. All right. So the best players were always together. Right. So I had. I had one kid who no shit. He at the, when he was like 12 or 13 years old, like this kid could freaking bring it. Like he was way better than I was at that age. Like oh, he, it, did you send a clip of this kid? Yeah. Doing the freaking Picaro thing. Yeah. He was a fucking badass. Yeah. <laughs> He's good, man. <clears throat> He's good. So but when he was like 12 or 13, maybe four, he, he was, he was in the, like the top band with like high school age kids, like 17, 18 year old kid. They did, um, here comes the sun. And I'm like, we start talking about Ringo and it, it auto automatically leads. to I don't think I don't see what's so great about him. And then I'm like, all right, here comes the sun. Play it. And that the, the sun, 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 here it comes. Dude, there's and, and another thing is, is if you look at um, ticket to ride, uh, 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 uh. Oh, 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 oh. He's got that drag on the da -go -go, da -do -do, da -do -do, da -do -do. It's so hard to emulate. And mm -hmm. he is the epitome of of the guy who played what was perfect for the song. We talk about Mike Borden. I think Ringo yeah. was the he was the ultimate at yeah. that. And I hear all this bullshit about these, you know, like the like the um the Bernard Purdy thing, which you know that story, right? Yeah, I do. Okay, Bernard Purdy play, says he plays on. There's actually a reasonable explanation for that. Do you know what it is? No, I have no idea. Bernard says, he goes, I can remember I had to do like three or four songs for this band from England. And he goes, and one of the songs was Yeah, Yeah, Yeah. Hmm. Well, and what he would do is they would have studio drummers, like real drummers, clean up like the amateur drummers, right? Well, I, the, 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 the name of the video on YouTube is called Replacing Ringo. And it actually makes a point that they're both telling the truth. That there is some Pete Best stuff. And one of them is She Loves You. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's, but it's a recording of Pete Best playing it. So that was released in the early years by Capitol. So Capitol had put out, or was it Capitol? What their early, whatever the early label was. I'm, I'm messing this up. Jamie, can you pull this up for me? Um, but... <laughs> 
that's just my, my fantasizing I'm, I'm joe rogan again um it, now i'm gonna start talking about monkeys like <laughs> <laughs> it, what it was was it was some Pete Best stuff, but he actually played over the top of it and cleaned up. And it makes sense. Like this whole like they made the point like both of these guys are telling the truth because if Ringo never played on any of those songs with all of the all of the people that worked on those albums, at some point it would have come out by now. It's like it's like somebody blowing up the World Trade Center. Okay, so they, they went in and they wired the World Trade Center with, with explosives, but nobody saw anything. It's just you can't you can't keep a conspiracy under wrap that long. You just can't do it. You can't do it. In music in general, no, especially with the Beatles. Especially music. No fucking way. Everybody's looking to shit on everybody in music. Oh, yeah. yeah I mean, like, you know, and <laughs> I won't say it. There are other there are other things say that it. people will take. Mo- no, I can't. <laughs> There are other things where people take money to do what the fuck ever, but in music, man, like you can get a shitload done for five hundred bucks. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like seriously, you, man, it's like five fucking bills. Five hundred dollars. What do I have to do? Yeah. And then some motherfucker that's just associated is like, what about four <laughs> hundred? It would mean so many, dude. I'll do it for three hundred. I'll do it for three hundred. And pretty that? soon, pretty soon, you're hiring somebody off Fiverr for five bucks a song. <laughs> Some guy on Fiverr that's like, I'm confirming it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I agree with you. There's no. I do my best work on Fiverr. Kept a <laughs> huh? Wait, what'd you say? What? <laughs> What about Fiverr? You do what? Uh, who? I, I eat Fiverr. It's really good. Oh, Fiverr. Oh, oh yes. Nice. Yeah. I make sure I get my daily allowance of Fiverr. It's good. It's good to keep you regular. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, there, Biggs. There's, there's no fucking way that that could be kept this under wraps this long. No, it's impossible. No. It is impossible. You you couldn't keep that under wraps for this long. And I you know, and I, it's it's a shame because. <sighs> Ringo gets shit on a lot. He gets shit on a lot by yeah, people. He does. It, and it's you know, like, you fucking muted yourself again. <laughs> what the hell? Is- <laughs> sexy unmute. Stop! On, stop muting. On, on, Big baby. sexy fat fingers keeps muting himself. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta keep hanging up the phone. <laughs> <laughs> He muted again. Actually, I muted him. (laughs) I'm going to ask him to unmute. (laughs) Unmute yourself. (laughs) You're muted again. (laughs) God, this is so much easier when you drink. Uh, Hold on. You're muted. I muted him too. Now this is like this is the worst part. Is like we can't get him unmuted. There we go. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Big sexy. I think I am anyway. <laughs> He's going. He's going. We're live. All right. Uh, all right. I guess I'm done with Ringo. On on to on to number two. Who does number two work for? I'm making mine up as I go. <laughs> they keep calling. Who's calling you? My prison girlfriend. Oh. <laughs> I got me one of them. <laughs> you need to take a call? No. All right. Who's your number two drummer then? My number two is a Mr. Shannon Larkin. Ah. Ooh, from yeah, uh, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Godsmack, Ugly Kid Joe, and currently Godsmack. Yeah, <laughs> me like you that guy. He's another guy. He's a powerhouse drummer. He's got a good groove. You can get a little off time, and he's a great. Which some guys don't like. He's a great theatrical drummer. I actually met him. Yeah. Did you? Yeah, I told you that story, didn't I? Uh I don't. No, I don't think he did. When he was with Ugly Kid Joe, 
they were playing Alpine. And I had a friend who worked at the bowling alley in Lake Geneva. And he's like, hey, man. He's like, don't tell anybody. But Ugly Kid Joe is going to come bowl here. <laughs> this is this is the big rock and roll lifestyle, right? <laughs> don't tell anybody. But Ugly Kid Joe. Ugly Kid Joe bowl. Right, ugly kid Joe is gonna come bowl here before the concert. I'm like, oh yeah, I won't tell anybody. What did I do? <laughs> but I've got a, like another question. Who the fuck cares that they're coming to bowl, man? Well, this is dude. This is when they were blowing up. Yeah, they're oh, pretty big. At one time. Yeah, this is they were they were opening up for this is they were opening up for Ozzy at Alpine, oh, so they were on tour with Ozzy. So I'm sorry, I missed that part. Yeah, this is not like this is an ugly kid Joe like years later. This is ugly kid Joe when uh uh hate everything about you was all over the radio. Yeah, they were a huge wear. So they they show up at the bowling alley and I'm there, like kind of snap I got my Zildjian t shirt on. <laughs> <laughs> this is what like she was the coolest town to grow up in dude like i tell these stories and it sounds like amazing but all these bands rolled through the town i grew up in fucking ugly kid joe is bowling at the bowling alley so i'm sitting there and like with one of my friends and somebody from the band it wasn't the, the singer was sleeping on a bus of course that's what singers do they all you know he was just sleeping up but the guitar player singer. shannon shannon largan and, and the bass player were in there with like the road manager and they're like uh i'm kind of like hanging out you know trying to be cool and and shannon larkin it had to be shannon larkin because he points to my he goes dude that guy's a drummer he goes i bet he knows how to keep score <laughs> they didn't know nobody how to keep score bowling and I, I'm they're like I'm like yeah I know how to keep score had no <laughs> fucking idea how to keep score in bowling <laughs> so I like they sit down, quick. Uh, no I they sit down like and this is before the like the automatic scores and like I sit down at, at the scores table and I'm like trying to like remember how to keep score in bowling you like bowl a couple of practice frames or whatever and, and right as i see a friend walk in i'm like he knows how to keep score i wave him over i'm like Do you know how to keep score so they i kept score and they gave me tickets to the show so that's my ugly kid shannon joel channel arkansas right. yeah yeah so no autograph i didn't get an autograph i didn't get i didn't get him to sign it all no, I didn't. I think I, I think I had it on the on the score sheet, but I think uh, I think my buddy took it. Yeah, nothing. I but yeah, that's. But by you know, and this is before cell phones. But like by the time that like the tenth frame and roll, it, the word was out around Lake Geneva that ugly kid show was born, and it was just you know by that point it was just filled with people. You know, Maybe. yeah. <laughs> So that's my ugly kid Joe story. But Shannon Larkin, I totally, I totally butchered your 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 big point, but I totally stole it. I heard somebody crack a beer. Mm -hmm. Whoever did is a prick. Peter North. <laughs> Peter North. Or his younger brother, Jimmy North. <laughs> Which is correct. Who will remember Jimmy North? <laughs> oh, nobody will. Is Peter North still in business? You mean Peter yeah. North Incorporated? <laughs> <laughs> or, Peter, or Peter North <laughs> LLC? Peter yeah. North Incorporated. We got courts upon courts. <laughs> you know, Peter North LLC. <laughs> What's the LLC stand for? Limited liability. Program. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. God. Which you in that business you definitely need. Especially nowadays. Peter North shirt. Sure. Especially if you got a wee wee. <laughs> you end up, end up like Ron Jeremy. Wee -wee. <laughs> yeah. What about what about uh Peter North? Oh, I was gonna say, have you seen his shirts? Deserve Peter North shirt? Yeah, there's a that you need to yeah. I need to pull this up. Yeah, Hold on. Your Rogan thing. All right. I'm bring it Jimmy, up on the interwebs. Jimmy, can you pull that up for me? Uh, you need one of those peoples. Peter Isn't North. There's some like Looks High like school intern you could get going. Yeah, exactly. That's good at that stuff. Oh, this is awesome. <laughs> I told you. Oh, my God. This is awesome. Hold on. I told you. <laughs> you gotta have it, man. 
No way. Oh my god. Well you gotta get you gotta get the white <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, I'm gonna give you my credit card number. Order me a in black right now. Oh my god. Oh, color Heather Gray. <laughs> what are the color? Uh, oh my god, that's awesome. That's uh, look, look, up the one Peter, look up the one that says Peter North was here. Talk to much yourself. We're talking about drummers, I thought, but yes, we segued into. I don't even know what fucking number we're on. Uh, we're on Shannon Larkin. Two. Number, number we're two. on two. Number two. Okay. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Wait. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Got to get that, man. I'm that. <laughs> oh, I'm getting that. Oh my god, that's the shirt I would buy. I don't know if I'd wear it though. <laughs> exactly. I mean, that's what I was gonna say. I'd, I'd wear it. <laughs> I don't know if I would. <laughs> mm. oh, All right, okay. number two. Then we're almost done with this shit because this shit's going way longer than it was supposed to go. <laughs> well, y'all brought up. Shannon Larkin, before I can like make up a number two, I'll buy myself time. <laughs> you had enough time to think about this while I was looking up Peter North shirts. <laughs> I know. <laughs> think that's the thing. Shit, man. Who was Lillian X uh, drummer that moved on to Tommy drama? Scott? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Tommy yeah. Scott. Another badass. Another badass. Yeah, he was Another good. Absolute badass. But he got shit because he played with Lillian X. Like, I remember people fucking bagging on him because he played with Lillian X. Yeah, but, I mean, Lil it, we talked about this. Lillian X put out a badass fucking album. Psycho Schizophrenia is a fucking unbelievable album. It's killer, man. It's a killer album. <laughs> no, Tommy Scott was a he's a he's a freaking he's a great drummer, man. And I'm sure nobody yeah. would have thought of him. He went on to Fuel. He played with Fuel. Oh, he did. He went on to Fuel after after um, um, Godsmack, right? I have no idea, man. You you know oh, actually, uh, I'm thinking of the raw. I'm thinking of Tommy Stewart. Never mind. I guess we go to number one now. Number one, it is number one. Oh, I'll throw in number two. Did I do number? Two? Yeah, you did your number two. You 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 changed it like five times. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna throw in Heard. Artemis Pile just for discussion. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I will just say this as far as Artemis Pile is concerned. Leonard Skinner's first run. That's some of the groovingest shit <laughs> on the planet. Yeah. Yeah. It you know what? Like Another one that didn't make the list that not my list anyway, is Les Banks. I'm gonna throw out Les Banks from Judas Priest. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, listen to Unleash in the East. Um, Dave Howland, for whatever reason, is the guy that was in Judas Priest heyday. He was the drummer in the heyday of Judas Priest. I think he's the worst drummer Judas Priest ever had. I think he's a he's a good drummer, but he's nowhere near Les Banks. Les Banks was like a jazz player, man. You know, listen to to to. Um, um, uh, uh, da, da, uh, da, 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 I'm drawing a blank on it. Oh my God! Victim of changes. Victim of changes. Ah, off, okay, off, okay. off. Unleashed in the east. Yeah, yeah. What right. Les Banks does on that, but he's not my number one drummer. Um, he's just my honorable mention. Um, my number one most underrated drummer in the world. Are you ready for this? <laughs> Are you ready? I'm ready, to, uh, I'm ready to roll my eyes. Yeah. Can't play a paradiddle. <laughs> he can't do that. <laughs> He can't play with a click track. He can't do that. Um, and he's actually gotten worse yeah, over the Lars. years. <laughs> Lars Ulrich, my most Lars. underrated drummer of all time. And here's what I have to say about Lars. Fight fire with fire. Yeah. Motherfucker played fight fire with fire. Yeah. Yeah. Master of Puppets. He played Master of Puppets. Okay. Say what you, everything you want about Lars Ulrich now. Which okay. is true. But he did all that. 
Yep. It doesn't matter what he does now, okay? Yeah, he maybe his, you know what? But yeah. you know, uh, <laughs> whatever. You know, you know, uh, Babe Ruth couldn't quite hit the same as he could when he was young. Not comparing you know Lars to Babe Ruth, but we all lose at some point. We all lose our ability. Every drummer does, except for maybe Buddy Rich or something, you know. But Lars, he did what he did, and. You can't take that away. No. He fight fire with fire, man. I can't play. I still can't play fight fire with fire. He, and he had this Lars way of just everything just being uh, like a car that was airing a skid and it was going to slam into the wall at the last second. But somehow he always managed to pull it back. Uh, just uh, I love Lars, man. I hate Lars, but I love Lars. You know, I think Lars is is. I, I I give him a lot of shit. You know I do. I I give the dude a lot of shit. But at the same time, I can't I can't take away, right. especially those two albums, uh, uh, Ride the Lightning and and Master Puppets. He did that, and he did that in an era before Pro Tools, before everybody could come in and quantitize shit up and line it up on a grid. He did that all before then, you know. And for that, Lars, you my man. Yeah. So Lars Ulrich is my number one. I'm right now. Everybody's just rolling their eyes. If they're still on here, this has been going on for like three hours. We got, I got like one diehard that's watching this. <laughs> Let's hear some Genesis. Yeah. What was, what was, what was that fucking, uh, the, oh my God. When that kid wanted me to play that, that Troy, what's, Troy wanted me to play that, that weird freaking Genesis song that Peter Gabriel was like wearing a which, well, yeah which one he I, he hit like five of them out of the park where I was like what the fuck yeah oh Slenderman something or Slenderman or, or yeah, 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 yeah Slipperman yeah. or something Slender Slipperman or some shit that's it, like that's that. it, Slipperman like just the nerdiest freaking music I got all right what's your number one there big sexy. <sighs> Ah, uh, my number one's Morgan Rose from a little band you might have heard of called Seven Dust. Oh man, don't even get me started. <laughs> That's him. That's the guy. Morgan. Morgan Rose. Morgan Rose, without a doubt, one of the best players on the planet. His right foot alone is a machine. Yeah. He hits harder. That dude hits harder than yeah. anybody I've ever seen. I was going to say, like, there are, I, I don't know, there's just such a select group of dudes or players, I should say, that go that hard. And he is in there. Not only that, but the guy can groove. Oh, God. He can go off time. He can syncopate. He can do this weird fill stuff. But he can also just. Just keep it simple. He's and he's never gotten the mainstream yeah. recognition. You know, I think he he gets it in the metal community. I think yeah. metal drum, metal drummers like him, but there's a I, metal drummers in general don't seem to get respect outside no, of the metal community. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Like they, they they don't get the respect that jazz drummers get or fusion drummers get or. Or and and I understand why you know there's some snootiness with jazz drummers or right. the, the like jazz the community jazz in general, but they're snootiest in the met. They're snooty, 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 snooty you, snootiness in the are metal. Are you using Dr. Seuss words now? No, I can't. I don't want to get canceled. Yeah, they'll, they'll yeah. shut this down. Yeah, I, <laughs> they will shut this shit down they like a fucking, <laughs> you know. It's they'll so show tie. up at your. They'll show up at so your house. Tennis. They will. They will. They're angry, angry people, man. Angry people. Hold on. I don't know. Oh yeah. <laughs> gotta play the lumberjack. Same. This is my. That's your underrated wow, 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 lumberjack wow. song. This is yeah. These wait. This is my. Uh, <laughs> what the? I forgot his name. 
Phil Verone, baby. Phil Verone, my Phil Verone vibrating drumstick. Sir. <laughs> Another underrated drummer. <laughs> <laughs> he really is, man. Yeah, Phil Verone's great, man. That whole yeah. band. Really Dude could do so much coke and still stay upright. They made a movie about him. That's how much coke he did. Well, okay, so here's my question. Like, they did make a movie about that, but now let's let's put that like in context. So, how much cocaine did he do compared to an unlimited budget of Motley Crue back? In- I think he did. He did enough cocaine to warrant them to, to warrant a director completely making a hundred degree, a hundred eighty yeah, degree pivot, okay. and say this is no longer about the band. This is about this coked up drummer. <laughs> right, right, well, right. The band had to be fucking pissed about that too. I think they were. Uh, they, you know, he quit playing with them afterwards. You know, or they, I, they you know, it's. <laughs> This crazy. That's not Skid Row anyway. You know, it's Bass isn't even the singer. You know, well, the Huso is Skid Row to me. I mean, you know, it, it's just the way I think of of that. But and then the same way that you know Phil is Saigon Kick. That's just how I associate with those guys at that time. Yeah, I forgot where were we at? Oh, uh, Morgan Rose. Morgan Rose. Oh Jesus! Yeah. We were talking about the snootiness of the metal drummer community. Yeah, the jazz, the, the jazz community. drummer community, which are similar. They're very similar in a way. You know, they, they'll never admit it, but metal metal community and the jazz community—they're very similar in their snootiness. Nope, they turn their nose up at everything. You know, nope, that's not it. You know, but yeah. but I mean the 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 thing, the, the groove he plays on uh, Angel Sun. Oh shit! It's just a neat groove. I mean, it's a great song too. But it's just—it's like if if my if I was in a band and they wrote that song, I never ever in a hundred years would have came up with a groove like that. Bitch! You just wouldn't think a groove like that would work for a song like that. Bitch! He came up with this. Bitch. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Bitch! I mean, it's so good. Yeah. So it, and when when it kicks into the halftime thing, it grooves. It's heavy, but it grooves. Yeah. You know, um, what was it? Waffle. But that was the other song. Waffle. Waffle. Yeah, yeah, that was another one, man. Well, I mean, there's so many, but yeah. Yeah, I, I really dug. I dig Seven Dust. You know, I think Seven Dust is a complete band. I, I love the freaking singer. You know. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah, they're a freaking great band, man. Yeah. They are uh, anything. Anything he does is unorthodox. It's it's him. <laughs> Yeah. It's kind of like a, a newer version of what we were talking about with Bill Ward. Bill Ward, undeniably him. If you examine yeah. anything that Morgan has done, it's him. Mm-hmm. And you can tell that shit. He's kind of fucked up now, isn't he? Didn't he, didn't he hurt himself? Like he had to like take himself out of commission for a little while. Bill Ward? No, uh, Morgan. Oh, I want Morgan. Yeah, yeah he had gone through some health issues. That's physically right. Physically fucking banged up, man. He hit so freaking hard. I mean, that's, has, yeah. there's no way he doesn't have shoulder issues, knee issues. I mean, it's it's anything under the sun that's a possibility, man. He He's a physical fucking player. Yeah, that's he what he's hard for. Trey, you hit hard. I hit hard. I'm fucked up. Not like that. No, I, but I, that's what I'm saying is I don't hit near as hard as he does, and I'm fucked up. And I think you're kind of fucked up too. You think? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not, I mean, physically. No, that's what I'm saying. Not mentally. I mean, yeah, physically. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm fucked up, man. I'm getting a little better, but I have, I have issues. Like this shit is caught up with me, and I'm not doing 110 dates a year. You know? <laughs> no, man. Yeah. I'm playing. I'm playing freaking Fleetwood Mac covers at a corner bar. <laughs> I'm not hitting like that, and I'm fucked up. You know, I'll be, I'll be the first to tell you. Like now, if I were, if I were back in a live situation as opposed to doing covers on here, I would be hitting a lot harder because there's you you understand what I'm saying, dude. There's a different energy to that. So yeah, you, you're you're putting on. A you hit harder live than you do doing this. I fucking hope so. I don't. I hit way harder doing this. Really? Way harder because it's a studio thing with me. So I have the mentality of like the first time I ever went in the studio. The very first time I went in the studio, the engineer told me he's like, "You have to hit the drum exactly the same every time." He's like, "He's like, so hit hard." 
And that kind of, st- I was 18 years old, dude, you know, I, but my first time in a studio, the very first studio I ever recorded in was the same studio re- fucking uh, Skid Row recorded their first album in. I remember you telling me. That. Yeah, it's, it's this is the first recording studio I ever went in. We were so stupid. We had we could, like could have gone and recorded this one song for three hundred dollars, but we had to like all like take money out of our freaking college fund to go record one song at this studio, and it still didn't sound that great. <laughs> Not like I was going to college anyway, but. Uh, yeah, that wasn't in the cards for me. But I, he, I remember him telling me, he's like, you got to hit the drum hard. So he's, I remember him saying, he's like, don't hit as hard as you can. So it chokes. He's like, but hit hard. So I took that every time I went to the studio afterwards. And no, I never got any complaints really, you know, for men, you know, if, if you hit hard, it's easier to hit hard and be consistent. I think. Exactly. I was going to say, it's yeah, not just, you know, hitting hard. It's the, it's the consistency. So when I'm doing a cover, this is like studio time in a sense. It and so I hit hard. So I hit harder doing this than I do in gigs, but I'm also doing different gigs than you. You know, I have one metal band that I play with and then the rest is, uh i want yeah. you to know you know and all so i have to lay back that that's a fair point because I, I i generalized it there so no i did gigs too where i was in rooms i've done way more gigs in those rooms than i have big rooms yeah where it's been like what the fuck are you doing man chill out and then you find yourself all of a sudden like i am so uncomfortable but 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 you know at the at the same time, I played like a big stage. Comes to mind, like fucking playing Summerfest, fucking seeing all those people, and I'm on this huge stage, and I'm just like, you know, and just bashing, and like three songs in, right through the snare hat. <laughs> it happens, man. You know, and then like four songs in, like somebody give me water, I'm gonna throw up. <laughs> but you know, the other part of being on here. And that's like you're you're crushing it and all this, but then the second you start like taking both sticks, putting them in one hand, and just killing your cymbals, try to mix that shit. Oh, you can't. <laughs> you can't. And no. I don't do it, man, because like I want to stand up and just kill my fucking cymbals, which is like because they're not expensive enough. Oh, yeah, because they're so, they're so oh. cheap that you might as well just crack them. Yeah, uh, so I'm, I'm always in that weird space of like super cheap, be lighter up here, but then I've got to stay consistent down here. So I don't fucking know, man. Beat the shit out of me. Which number were we on? We're on number one, man. Uno, four, five, number, four. number unos. Unos. We're waiting on your number one. Yeah, I mean, waiting on your number one. Have uh, okay. he was Ringo, I was oh, Rose. I was Lars. It was no, Lars. You were Lars. You were Lars. Yeah, I was you Rose. Were Lars. You Jamie, pull that up for me, would you? <laughs> We need a controversial. I did the controversial. Lars is fucking controversial. There's nobody more controversial than Lars. Oh, well, Ringo. I got one. Ringo and Lars. Lars is the most hated drummer in the world. I got one. I think it, you're, this is going to drive you fucking nuts. If you better. say fucking Cooper Tremor, I'm going to fucking disconnect you. No, but I'm going to tell you. <laughs> oh, we lost yeah. Trey. <laughs> <laughs> See, like he is a good example. There's a there's a generational gap, and he is a great example of that. Because again, I go to not my thing, but clearly, clearly, dude can play. A lot of people, he's a lot of people's thing, man. Yeah, and clearly that he can play. But oh, really can, I, it's just I I watch him and I'm like, you're 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 killing the fucking groove, dude. Yeah, I understand, <laughs> and it's not just you. It's it's it. I mean, you know, it's it's a whole spectrum of people. I can't stand that. I can't, I can't, I can, I, I can't do any of it. I, and I'll be the first to admit, yeah. like they do can fucking play circles around me, oh, but I, I can't, if it doesn't, it's like, I don't want to do any of that though. Exactly. You know? See, that's the generation. And, and it's, I think it's a generation thing too. Like, like I never wanted to be a drummer, dude. Like that's not, I wanted to be in a band. Well, Right, you didn't you didn't inspire to be like Thomas Lang. Right, exactly. Like I that. wanted to be in a band. Yeah, that's fair. Like an absolute like- an absolute fundamental monster. Right. I never, right. I never aspired to that. And then I can go back to when I started. Dude, it's not that I aspired that I didn't aspire to it. 
I had guys that I came up with that would have fucking kicked my ass if I did that shit. Oh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> they would have killed me. They would have been like, what the hell do you think you're doing? They would have gave me the stink still, eye. Still, to this day, it, it, like I, I remember fucking when I was in that road band, these are guys I played albums with and I'd done hundreds of gigs with. I showed up with a second crash symbol. That's it. Just a second crash symbol. That's all I did was I brought one extra crash symbol to the gig. They're like, I remember he's like, what's that for? I'm like, it's just an extra symbol, dude. What do you need that for? <laughs> oh my God, man. You, you know, but it was just like in his mind, it was, yeah. You you don't need yet to do what we do. All you need to do what we do is a kick, a snare drum a ride in one crash in your hi-hat and that's it yeah, and it kind of is you know there is some truth to that it really is <laughs> maybe it's china and at the same time i can look at players that are younger and i i really do i'm not bullshitting on this i respect the fact they have the kind of freedom they have now mm -hmm. it did not exist when you did were not there. exist at all and you know what though I'm paying gigs to this day. It still doesn't exist these motherfuckers go in they they go into paying gig situations and and I, I think I told you this story is I was doing a, a dueling piano gig and it was a guy. I'm not going to mention who it was, but it was a dude who did really well in a certain drumming contest and they fired him off the gig because I actually don't think you told me this. Yeah, he was like a, a he was he was at a college. He went to a college. He went to a college in the state that's to the east of us. <laughs> and he was like in the jazz program there. And he, hey. one of these chops drummers. And he, um, they fired him off the gig because he couldn't play songs. Like he had no, he had never done gigs where he just had to listen to music and do nothing but play two and four. All he had done is jazz and chop shit. Oh. And he, he crashed and burned. Like, crashed and burned. That's a good example. We circle back around to a guy like Mangini. So, take him for an example. Use that and understand, like, if his life were on the line, he can throw all of that out the window. He no. He can just do two and four, dude. All he has to do is do two and four. And, like, some of these guys have, have come up and they've done nothing but chop shit. And yeah. and they get into a situation where all you got to do is listen to either the guitar player or the piano player and follow them and do nothing but play two and four and watch them. It's not a and they they crash oh, and burn. You know, you have no idea. I mean, you, well, you do. You understand playing from this position. Exactly, <laughs> watching fingers. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do that. Like, I'll see the fingers change. I'm like, crash. Something's happening. You know, and I have no idea what the song is. I played songs. I, and I used to when I was teaching, I would have kids come in and I would say to them, I'm like, you can play a song without ever hearing it. And, and, and they like they didn't believe me. I'm like, you can do it. This isn't guitar. This isn't piano. This isn't bass. You don't have to know notes. All you have to know is the feel of the song. Okay. And, and I would I'd prove it to them. Like, play a song. Pick a song. And I'd play along to it, you know. And I would kind of, kind of play it, you know. Yeah, with the, with, within well, for what within reason. About. Right. Yeah, within, within reason. reason. You, and I you I have to. Play. And you have to. Yeah. You have to listen. And that's. It's, that's a, it's the key. You have to listen. It's all you have to do. If you play nothing but eight notes on a hi hat, stare them on two and four, kick drum on one and three, and you listen to what everybody else is doing, you can get through a gig. You will. You will get through a gig. You know, I, 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 I've done it too. I've showed up to and gig. I'm living proof. I'll get the, <laughs> I, I'll, I'll get the song list, and I, I've done this before. Like I got the song list from this dude. And I'm like, dude, I don't know any of these songs, and this is like. You know, like a day before, he's like, ah, you'll be fine. And I show up and I'm fine. I just kind of, you know, right. I pay attention. Yeah. And you play, you're playing like this. I, I, here? Exactly. Right, right here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> unless, unless there's a significant, unless there's attractive pay involved, I, I have been completely honest with those type acts. Yeah. You know, listen, man, I'm not going to go through this stuff head to toe. I, you know, no, you, you can't. And I, and I, and I, I you know, your reputation is on the line. So I like being upfront about that by saying, 
if you expect me to be note for note or anything like that, that's not the way I'm going to approach this. And most of them, no, basically all of them, just like, dude, whatever. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah. Oh, shit, where were we? Your number one most unrated German. Your number one was still waiting. <laughs> oh, shit, man, I forgot to work in. Jeff, you ignorant slut. <laughs> <laughs> What if I throw out Peter Chris? Oh, fuck you. <laughs> Peter Chris. Well, you can throw it out. I mean, Jeff will hit it back. I knew it was going to happen. I fucking knew it. I knew it. All right, sit down. Sit down. <laughs> Tell me about Peter Chris. <laughs> okay. Let's talk. Okay. He gets shit on by everybody. Is that is that fair? No, I don't think he does. Really? I, actually, I think I think Peter Chris gets a lot of respect, actually. Okay. Okay. I, I, you know, I don't hate. I'm not a Peter Chris hater. <laughs> I, it's uh, I watch Peter Chris and I watch him go tippy tapping the drums. I'm like, there's no way. It's like they're playing. Kiss is playing. Remember when they did their big reunion concert? And you're in the thicket, <laughs> and. Peter Chris is tippy tapping on those drums and they're just huge. I'm like, there's no way. There's no way that sound is all him. No. And Obviously, really that, that snare drum was faker than a stripper's tits. <laughs> hey! Well, hey! not strippers from Wisconsin. <laughs> that's my, yeah, it's the snare, man. <laughs> that's the snare. That's the snare. You want to tell the story? You want Tell the story, the man. Dude. Wait, well, who was it? What's his? It was it Glenn Fricker, dude? He's like one of the biggest recording channels on YouTube. Yeah, well, I handed that track off to my buddy Adam, and he said, "Hey, man, this is getting you know." I submitted it for I forget the name of the series. Specter Sound, where he critiques. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's like a like a he's like the biggest, probably the biggest recording channel on YouTube, or pretty right. close to it. You know. Which, which I had seen the channel, obviously, and yeah. so I was like, "Okay, well, let me know, man." You know. And he sent me a link just out of the blue. And I was like, holy shit. So we get on there, or I get on there, and I'm listening, and he's reviewing my buddy's song. And he said great things about he said great things about the mix. I watched the video. Yeah, he, he liked the mix. Yeah. And he was listening to the mix as I was listening to it. <laughs> I mean, I'm just being honest. I was oh, like, you never heard it yet? Well, no, I'd heard it, but not <laughs> like that. Yeah. So I was like, that's that's kind of that fucking snare is big. <laughs> and as soon as he said mix is good snares fake as shit i was like yeah it's, it's, you ain't lying, his, his exact words were that snare drum is faker than a stripper's tits <laughs> and i mean as the drummer who did it i was sitting there going I'm pretty sure you're fucking right, man. Because <laughs> I don't remember that shit sounding that way at all. Here's a little secret for the three people that are still watching this. <laughs> Most. You think mo three are still on? Uh, no. I, I think Troy's still watching. Uh, Genesis. Yeah. Um, most drums you hear nowadays are sampled there's nothing th and that's what it's a part of the reason why it's so hard to do this with modern drummers is because none of these modern drummers have distinct sounds anymore because all the drums are sampled and they're all lined up perfectly to a grid and it's taken the personality completely especially drummers it, it's really killed like what made drummers good back then you know it has, how it has put a, yeah it's put a different because you, you don't know anymore. Is there even a per, like in the eighties? It was what the, the 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 drum set of the engineer's choice was the sonars, right? And in the nineties, it was the Yamahas. Is there, is there even a, a set in the two thousands and the two thousand? It doesn't. It doesn't matter anymore. That, you could bring it that, for them. They, that they prefer anymore. Uh, because most everything nowadays, they bring in whatever. It, it, the drummer is, especially in modern rock, has become so irrelevant. And I hate to say that, but yeah. there's some truth to it. They become because, so irrelevant yeah. because first thing they do is 
they sample all the sounds. So the snare drum, the guy could have a black beauty or whatever. They're going to sample the snare drum sound. Or they're going to they're going to blend in snare sampled sounds with the natural sound, right? The right. next thing they're going to do is they're going to take all the imperfections because the imperfections is what makes a drummer what a drummer is. John Bonham's imperfections made John Bonham John Bonham. Okay? Jeff Picaro's imperfections made Jeff Picaro Jeff Picaro. Those imperfections, how they space the notes in between the notes. So what I'm saying with the notes in between the notes, I'm saying the 16th notes from beat one to beat two and 16th notes, those four notes, each drummer has a special way that they would space those notes out. That made their feel. Right. Nowadays, they put all that in a computer, they line it up to a grid, and what happens here was from if if a, if a if a, the line is here, this drummer would put his note here, this drummer would place his note here, and then they take it now and they go and it's lined up perfectly and it's taken all the personality out of right. drumming. And it's true, and I, I hate it. I really do. And I hate to sound like an old guy, but once again, it's a generational thing. You know? It, it exists. It exists. It well, you know how I feel as far as getting a good sound because I'm not afraid. I, I have, I have done things on here. I've done it live, for that matter. I yeah, use, I've incorporated sampling. I have two on live. Uh, I have two. I, I have, I have different, different deals. One week, it's or, you know, one month for that matter. It's like I kind of dig in this sound, and then I go away from it. Yeah, I don't know, man. I just, but I. You and I have also talked on this, man. I enjoy mixing. It's a fun part of this. It's the funnest part. I, everything else sucks. The ed editing videos, the dealing with trolls in the comments section, you know. That would be fun. <laughs> I love dealing with trolls. The funnest part for me is the mixing. I would I seriously, I, I've considered like just starting my own little business saying, Hey, send me your drum covers. and I'll try to fix the sound. You know, Ooh, I've, I, man, I've thought about that. Yeah. Actually, you, if you do that, let me know. Okay. Because you would do a hell of a job with that. Nah. Yeah. I mean, I, I love it. That's my favorite part of this whole thing, you know, hell, man. And I tell everybody like, I'm not an, and I mean it, I'm not an audio engineer, man. I'm, You're right. No, 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 no. I'm a, I'm a drummer who by default had to start mixing. Yeah. And just also by default, I love that shit. Man. It's fun, dude. It's fun. It's fun. It's the funnest part of this whole thing. The video editing, all the other shit that goes into it. I hate doing it. If I could just mix, I don't even like recording. <laughs> recording can be a like, he doesn't even like playing the drums. I don't even like playing the drums. If I could just, just not do any of that and just sit and mix, I'd be happy. <laughs> Right, was, I'm going I'm to go back to this real quick. I will say, Peter Chris, I I do respect him. Uh, I have a great deal of respect for Peter Chris. I really do. He he's another one. He yeah, had you can't song. not. So he just did. But that's a double negative. Somebody else. Um, my, my number needs to be mentioned. My my actually my buddy Mike Stone, who played guitar for Queensrÿche, actually played with Peter Chris. He was in Peter Chris's solo band. That's how he got his start, like in the industry. He was out in LA and and he played with Peter Chris. And I'm like, dude, what's up with Peter Chris, man? <laughs> That's what I said to him. He's like, I think he's a genius. That's what he said. Yeah, he has, you know, he has his own thing. If you listen to the solo in a hundred thousand years, again, <laughs> it goes to the unique factor. Man. I I I hate. I don't like Kiss. That's my problem with Peter Chris. I don't like, you know what? It's not even that I don't like Kiss. I don't like Gene Simmons. See, I like Gene. And he's kind of, he kind of ruins Kiss for me a little bit. You know, I, it's, it's fun. I really enjoy, like, Kiss fans to me are the, you just like, pick on them. I just pick on Kiss. Well, Kiss fans are like the Grateful Dead fans of heavy metal. You know, they're just so, they're like, I don't so, know any Kiss fans. <laughs> they're so appalled. <laughs> <laughs> They're so appalled. You don't like Kiss. You don't like Kiss. Say, say, tell a deadhead, dude. I think the Grateful Dead sucks. I don't think they can write song. Oh, I, and they just, well, you just don't understand, man. Tell that to a Rush fan. <laughs> as, as a Rush fan, I'm saying this. Say that to a Rush fan. Just you don't get Rush. Well, you just don't understand, man. Nah, it's just, it's just not, it's not your thing. Kiss. I actually don't. It pains me to say this. 
it really does but i do like a lot of kiss songs but i really just i know you do i know i listen to i don't own a single kiss album but you know the last kiss album i bought i have no idea the elder it's actually good songs on that <laughs> that album was shit <laughs> <laughs> That was the last one or two good ones on there. I, no, I actually think the last Kiss album I ever owned was Lick It Up. Because I like Kiss when I was like 10. Like, I outgrew Kiss. Kind of like I outgrew G.I. Joe and He-Man. Because yeah. Kiss is the G.I. Joe <laughs> of rock and roll. But not My Little Pony. <laughs> but not my- <laughs> All right. I'm going to go to my actual number one now. Oh, I thought he was your number oh, one. Oh, you're for really real number I, I, one. I just, I like, I love fucking with you on, on Kiss. Oh. Fun. Right, my number one is Jason Bonham. Jason. Jason. Yeah, he's a great drummer, dude. He cannot. That is, he, wow. He can never, ever escape that. No, he never will be. And it's all these idiots. It's no, the same no. thing with the stupid ass idiots. He's not his dad. No, no he's shit, not his, man. no shit, he's not his dad. Listen what? to Black. Country communion. Listen to those albums, dude. Yeah. Listen to the shit he did with Jimmy Page and Outrider. Uh, uh, dude's a great drummer, man. Yeah, he is. Uh, and I mean, oh, he yeah. spent the formative years basically just trying to figure out who the hell am I. He didn't want to play drums. Like he had like no interest He's in playing. A BMX rider. Man. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't. Um, yeah. So it, I I don't know. I just he's kind of like me, like. I wanted to play baseball, but I was good at drums and terrible at baseball. Can't hit a curveball, but can play a paradiddle. <laughs> can't run, can't catch, can't throw, can keep a groove. You know, it's just kind of like you just kind of like you, you. I never, I like playing drums, but I really wanted to play baseball. You know what I mean? I love fucking yeah. Baseball. Yeah. yeah. I was short. I was fat. Couldn't throw. Couldn't run. Couldn't catch. Um, couldn't hit. Um, basically had a... Tr- All those things are working against Right. Me. Everything was working. I had a hard time making it from the bench to home plate without, like, tripping. I was just so uncoordinated. <laughs> oh, man, I love sports. But isn't that like every drummer? They're, they have good rhythm, but they can't dance. Actually dance for shit. I, I can't dance. Is that true? I, I don't know. I can't dance. I cannot dance at all. What is that? What is the deal with that? I can't. I have uh, because it's. I, I can't move my body to to a rhythm. I can. Can't move. <laughs> this. I can do this. You know, and and you can do the Carlton like can, nobody's business. I can twerk oh, a little yeah. bit. <laughs> oh, so you can clap them cheeks? I can clap my cheeks. So. All right, clap the cheeks. Let's do it. You said it. Do it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> what is it? Wait, 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 wait. What was it earlier? Your iliotibial band? Iliotibial band. <laughs> IT band. Show us that again. <laughs> Make that noise again, and then pull up the Peter North shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Here we go. Hold on. I can do it one sec. Do a pull up Peter North shirt and then do the do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a gift. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Hold on. Let's circle that right there. I'm giving an honorable mention to uh, Bill Gibson with uh, Huey Lewis and the News. Hold on. <laughs> This is a family show. (laughs) This fucking thing is like three and a half hours long. (laughs) There's no no way. Watch that. There's no way anybody's still watching this thing. I think we got to quit watching (laughs) for. I think we got to figure out a way to cut this down. But yeah, you might have to work on this one a little bit. I think next time I gotta I gotta call Jeff a dickhead at least three times. Hold on. Let me do one thing here. Good night.